Well, the Tropical Water Quality Hub is one of six research hubs established under the National Environmental Science Program. And our remit is to do research to improve the water quality and health of the Great Barrier Reef. And to do that, we've, for the last five years, commissioned a series of research projects that deal with improving water quality on the ground and working with communities and Indigenous groups in the Great Barrier Reef. It's doing on-ground projects that will result in demonstrable change in water quality and habitat and also improving the uh, communities and industries that work in the Great Barrier Reef catchments. My name is Sheridan Morris, I'm the Managing Director of the Reef and Rainforest Research Centre. We host and help run the National Environmental Science Program. We run one of the hubs and that hub is the Tropical Water Quality Hub and it's primarily focused around the Great Barrier Reef and its catchments but also other matters around climate change, impacts of bleaching, those sort of matters around the Great Barrier Reef. These are truly complex systems in the true sense of the word. It's, conservation is more complex than rocket science because that's actually predictable, whereas the reality of what we deal with is it's actually deeply unpredictable and so you have to have a partnership approach if you want to iterate good outcomes. And I think that's been characterised by the NEST program. Certainly my experience of it in the last four, five, six years has been that it's been really catalytic in that. It's not just the quality of the individual outputs, which I think have been great, but actually it's that catalyzing nature by drawing upon more than just the science brains trust, the brains trust of, of the many has actually been deeply beneficial. The common question we get on a boat every day is, you know, how is the health of the reef? What's happening? You know, we go through our normal things saying, yeah, we get disturbances, recoveries. Relaying recent research in our interpretative stories we do on a daily basis, even research that we contribute to in conjunction with NESP, we'll intertwine those and little talks like, for example, on one of our products, we do a little crown of thorn starfish uh, program and we've had members of the Nest team there with us as we do those little presentations. Whilst there were many, many projects, we bring those projects together and synthesise them under main thematic areas. We're on the process of producing six synthesis reports that will summarise and communicate the outcomes of, a, of our very wide ranging research. We have a couple of um, what we would call our marquee projects and the first would be the Crown of Thorns Starfish Program and that was really difficult because we saw continuous outbreaks of Crown of Thorns Starfish on the Great Barrier Reef. What we did is we brought together all the ecologists and people who had spent the last 20-30 years studying Crown of Thorns but then we brought in actual pest managers to work with those people and that was a pretty unusual thing. And that's sitting back and looking at all the various disciplines of research that you need to actually answer problems. A very critical component of the work we do is to make sure that the research projects that we have have directly involved all the relevant stakeholders from community, industry and government to ensure that the results that we find will actually be adopted. So for example, if we recommend a new practice for farmers or industry groups, that they will actually are likely to adopt those practices. There's no doubt that this work is invaluable in that. I mean, so giving focused insights that can inform management, whether that's about the thresholds that you need to attain in terms of the numbers of crown and thorn starfish, or whether it's actually new um, techniques that would enable you to detect crown and thorn starfish if they're there, or for that matter, in, in farms to understand how practitioners might best manage fertiliser use of the like, all those things are immediately beneficial in terms of informing things like the consensus statement and then what we put into synthesis documents like the Outlook Report. One of the other marquee programs that we've actually been working on is how you get change in the farming community to reduce sediments and nutrients and other pollutants like pesticides into the Great Barrier Reef. The researchers understand our problems to try and tackle this and if we need to, to drive forward and get best outcomes we need that to happen. We're actually looking at practical solutions that won't harm the growers, won't harm the catchments and it won't harm the Queensland economy. This is how we can collectively overcome a problem and we've seen big strides forward with that and we're really, really pleased with where we're going with that. The reality is that information is now being picked up and worked with the Great Barrier Reef Foundation and their investment into actual change on the ground for water quality. So 
by making it very applied, flows through into actual on-ground action, and that's what we want to see. What I have valued most is that our work is very applied. We work very hard to make sure that the research that we've commissioned will result in direct change. It could be a change to government policy, it could be a change to how farmers work, it could be a change to how on-ground works are done, such as restoration of wetlands or control of crown of thorn starfish. Part of our role has been to ensure and broker projects that will actually result in change.